Good morning guys, today we are visiting Tormaresca Winery, we are in Minervino Murge and look around, this is my rental car I drove here from Monopoly and this is what is about, vineyards, Strada dei Vini, Doc Castel del Monte, yes we are in the Castel del Monte area these are some of their vineyards. They have uh, 140 hectares, but we're gonna find out everything in just you know, a bit. I guess the winery is over there. I will find out very soon. So let's go. So what we see here around the estate are 140 hectares of vineyards belonging to the Tormaresca, to the Antinori family, right? Yeah, is it. And then here the idea was to repurpose the Veneti, the ancient, uh, also grape that you can find in the past. Mm -hmm. Is the reason because to represent the land in the best way. Mm -hmm. Which reason? grapes uh, did you plant? Here we grow right now the Lianico, mm -hmm. the Fiano and the Moscato and the Nero di Troia grapes, okay. like the Octoton grapes. Okay, so the Fiano is the Fiano Pugliese, right? Fiano Pugliese, mm -hmm. yeah. And the Moscato is the Moscato, Moscato di Trani. Trani. Because okay. we are in the DOC of Castel del Monte but in the DOC of Trani. Okay, you. okay. And there also we have uh, uh, some international grapes like Chardonnay, Cabernet and Syrah. Because before that was born Tormaresca, there was here very famous agronomies that mm -hmm. test which kind of grape grows in the best way with traditional soil, the weather, the temperature range that is very high in the summer. So it's very hot, but it became cooler. Yeah, in the now we are in the summer, yeah. we are sweating. <laughs> <laughs> oh so God. you can see in yeah. the day it's very warm, yeah. huh? but uh, usually in the night it became cooler. So it's perfect for some. Uh, for yeah. The ripe some varietal that are more mineral, like okay. the Chardonnay. The reason because uh, here there is one of the best expression of the Chardonnay grapes. Mm -hmm. Here we are in the production area, right? Yeah, this one is the heart of the production. So mm -hmm. if, uh, uh, for us, the first uh, big attention is in the vineyard. Of course. So when the grapes arrive here, we have already made mostly of the work. The selection. Yeah. Right. So everything is, is estate grown. Yeah. Okay. In this way, we have, can have also the also the, the, the check about the selection and about the attention okay. that we have also in the other period. Who is your enologist? Michele is the, the enologist. Just a second. Yeah, we're gonna meet him <laughs> live. <laughs> live vlogging. Michele? Ah, ecco, piacere. Live vlogging. Laura, nice to meet you too. Michele and Michele how the last name? Le Leone. Leone, okay. Michele Leone is the head of the enologist. I, I guess you're not the only one because yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So you have a team of people yeah, like working with team, you. Yeah. Okay, and so Yeah, the enologist at uh, okay, okay, so... But he follows also oh, okay. the wines that come from here. Ah, okay, so great. So from this estate. Okay, which is the biggest challenge, let's say, uh, like um, growing grapes in this particular kind of um, hot condition in the summer and temperature excursion maybe during the cold season. So which is the biggest, let's say, um, the hard work, the biggest challenge? Uh, let's say we are in a fortunate part uh, of the uh, south of Italy mm -hmm. because in this land because of the kind of, of uh, soil uh, we have uh, uh, a reach of limestone mm -hmm. so 
they drain, so the, the water capability is very low. Okay, so, so it doesn't retain water, exactly. the soil. Okay. So uh, this is not the best condition for grapes, but mm -hmm. in this uh, land, of course, the warmer uh, climate, uh, the plants uh, could find a good balance between mm -hmm. uh, uh, the canopy mm -hmm. and production. So canopy management is very important. Absolutely. Okay. <coughs> for high quality wines, uh, we need to modulate uh, the production. Uh, so we find, uh, uh, we, we fight in this kind of climate, uh, doing uh, water, so we give a lot of water to the plant uh, okay. uh, during summer, but this modulates the production, so we do not produce more than five, six tons per uh, Okay, per yeah, you don't want like the high yields production because otherwise That's the quality exactly. of the wine will be totally lacking, different. of course. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And these uh, uh, enhance the kind of tannins, so uh, are very elegant and for whites uh, gives a good uh, balance between uh, sweetness mm -hmm. and uh, acidity. So this estate is completely organic, so we can't use the chemical substance in the vineyard. And okay, so, so all the, the, all the vineyards are certified organic? Yeah, yeah. The, this is estate, yeah. So uh, oh, the Kailupa estate is completely organic. Okay, and how many bottle, bottles do you produce? We produce about 300 of thousands of bottles just wow. here. Wow. So in total, Tornadesca produced 3 million bottles in both. The state. the state, okay. But there is a small production that comes just from here because uh, the soil is very calcarean mineral, but is vocated to produce uh, also the big wine. Okay. So the production is smaller here. It's okay. More vocated for uh, very longevity wine. And okay. So this is the gravity system they use when they harvest and all the grapes, selected grapes, goes into this uh, system which is at the stemmer and the stemming, um, of course the berries break a little bit so the berries and the must goes into these cooling tubes for the white wines so to keep the temperature, the control temperature du during this process. The smell is already different. Yeah, the smell of the cellar is always beautiful. So here we uh, keep the red wine in the tanks to stop the wine, so mm -hmm. where we can control the temperature. And that one of the tanks that we use for the red fermentation. Okay. Okay. So for the red wines, they use the, uh, that tank there for fermentation, which has that uh, tube, which is a, a pump over system, a uh, sort of batonnage, but uh, doing mechanically. And uh, for Alianico grapes, they use another system during fermentation. That is more delicate. Which is? This, which is? So in the Alianico, we need to use a different selection of red in the vineyard. Okay. So all the grapes are selected by hand. Mm -hmm. So we just select the, the best. The best of the yeah. best. Yeah. It's okay to produce one wine. Okay. But we produce just per thousand of bottles. Okay. And how do you manage the fermentation of, of the Alianico? In what way is different from the one so we just saw there? The grapes selected the red just here is more local. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the, the stemming with the, the soft carpet that is made by silicon. So it's just a, but mm -hmm. here is like totally by hand mm -hmm. stem, so it's more delicate. The grapes are rare, there are well, usually there are six people that select the They sort out, yeah. okay. So the second selection here. And then the grapes are running these different tanks and with a different shape. Yeah, the so uh, conic trunk uh, shape. Uh, and you don't do batonnage like the pump over? No. no. Because in this case, when there is the alcohol fermentation, mm -hmm. and then the skin slowly go up. Yes. The pistol that go down and break the cap. Ah, okay, this that one. This shape is more natural, mix again the skin with must. Okay, so, so that piston goes it. down, break the cap, and all the mass like goes down and then up yeah, naturally. In a natural way. Yeah. 
Okay. So we don't need to pump the wine. Yeah, it's so less stressed from the skin. It's less aggressive, let's yeah, say, than now. Yeah, can extract just the soft tannins, yeah. the silky part. Okay, yeah. Not the ostic one. Okay. After that, after 15 days, then we can extract the wine. It's the reason because the feet are so high. Oh, yeah. Because so. we can put a basket just here. Mm -hmm. We can extract also from gravity mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Yes, no again. stress again. No for stress the... again, and then the, the, the fruit around there. When well, we use a different press machine that is more delicate, ah, okay. it's plastic. Ah, okay. So, <laughs> it's wow. very similar to push by feet grapes. Yes. The same method, because this piston goes slowly, 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 slowly down to yeah, press, press the rest yeah, of the fruit to, to, yeah. without brush. But very gently, like yeah. not to extract the tannins, like in the seeds or in the skin again. Right. Okay. Because the idea is avoid to crush the seeds. Yeah. To avoid extracting the tannins. That okay, happens. that's really cool. Wow. I wish to be here with Harvest next time. <laughs> yeah. For in October. Yeah. October. October. Okay. And then after the part is the first pressing, everything can be the different tanks. Mm -hmm. Also to go home with unification. Okay. So here we are in the temple of wine aging. Wow. In a work cathedral. Yes, oh my god. The smell first of all is obviously addicting and amazing. Wow. So how many barrels do you have down here? We have here about the 500 barrels. Wow. So this one is the barrel room just for the red ones. Mm -hmm. Two red ones that come from Hotel Rupert Are all new barrels that we use for three times in the city. Okay. So just French and then the real book. Mm -hmm. But at the three times we sell them. Okay. Of course, here the condition is I mean, that's same, so it's controlled, the humidity is very high. Mm -hmm. So maintain the open the best condition. And which wines do you age here? The Aglianico, the Bocca di Lupo, and? So we age the Bocca di Lupo, that is Aglianico 100%, mm -hmm. and the blend of Aglianico, Cabernet Syrah, that is called Scravitangeli. Okay. So the duration is different, mm -hmm. of course. So the Bocca di Lupo stays 20 months mm -hmm. in oak. The Trentangel in the blend one year and four meters down we can find that soil. So that's the soil uh, there is in this area of Apulia where we are is tufo, so it's mainly um, calcareous and yeah. limestone soil. Yeah. So it's like soft soil because it's very calcareous. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the reason see. because the water goes darkly down. So it's a soil that doesn't keep water, so it doesn't retain yeah. uh, hydration and water for the plants. Yeah. Yeah. It's the reason because also it's a very dry soil, mm -hmm. not rich, but rich of minerality. Okay. So the more bouquet soil to produce quality because it's like for the plant to grow under the limit to survive. Yeah, yeah, so struggling to survive and so, so be better fruit. Like the natural selection yeah, of the best of the vines. Best, uh, the more strong plant. <laughs> so guys, welcome to my new living room. As you can see, I decided to move here at <laughs> Bocca di Lupo Estate. Are you, are you okay with that? <laughs> okay, look at the view, guys. Wow. You have a sea of vineyards yeah. and olive ocean. trees. Yeah. Oh, God. It's yeah. stunning. Stunning. This area is also called, Minervino Morge is called the balcony of Puglia. Oh, yeah. Because from here, that is uh, also the higher part. Also, if uh, we are just at 250 meters, but it is the highest. Uh, yeah, in the in, in, in this the... area, yeah, <laughs> we can see all the Basilicato region just there, there. Yeah, and then the north part that is the Gargano. So we are in the middle between the west and the coast. Coast. This uh, position is very lucky for this reason because there is the influence that comes from the coast, but also the 
influence that came from the land and the, yeah that give also the different uh, exertion in, in, in temperature the summer, yeah, in the night it's beautiful oh god and also this side here wow it's gorgeous so we started now the testing with the uh, calafuria which is the rosato uh, of Salento, Negramaro, grapes, Otto Romaresca. Yeah, something about this wine. So uh, the idea in this case is to represent a rosé wine that comes from a land of rosé, that is the Salento mm -hmm. land. But the idea is to give also the freshness uh, in the wine. So also in opposite of the usual rosé that comes from the Salento area, the idea is to have the character that comes from the sea. Mm -hmm. So the sapidity, the salty part, the freshness, but also a good acidity in the mouth. So the idea is to have a drinkable wine that is with a smell that is incredible on the first time. In the palate is very persistent, thanks to the good acidity. But it's a clean wine as well. It's so mineral and you know the intense at the palate. You have these bright uh, strawberries and cherries. Yes, white spices, peach. white peach. Mm. Also, yeah, it's so yummy. Oh god! So and nice. the saltiness. You have the this briny minerality. It's really tingling your tongue. It's, it's incredible. Because also in this case, we know right in the vineyard which one is the grape that we use for the rosé wine. So, of course, the treatments are different. And now we're having the Pietra Bianca Chardonnay, which has a 10% Fiano Pugliese in the blend, but it's 90% Chardonnay. And this is a, really a true expression of this land uh, because the Chardonnay translates the minerality of the soil beautifully. You can smell the minerality at the nose like with these salty flavors and then there is a ton of fruits in here like pears like white peaches again like a kiwi Mango. a sort of yeah like a tropical note it's beautiful and look at the color guys in bocca iniziare ho parlato e anche quella più cremosa quella più burrosa data dalla fermentazione malolattica uh, che viene effettuata anche in legno, quindi l'idea è quella di avere una complessità, però cremosità allo stesso tempo, quindi molto morbido. Di creare questo. So now we are testing the Aglianico Castel del Monte, which is Aglianico 100% Bocca di Lupo, the hallmark wine of the state, and um, it's aged 20 months uh, in uh, barrique. French and Hungarian barrique and then another two years in the bottle before releasing.